For the final time, we're going to have the Premier League Classic Cup for the Master League Edition um, available. The Classic version of this most likely not going to be the case anymore. For the next season, most likely just going to get the Premier Master League version then. So XL is going to be mandatory, which is going to be a little bit sad for a lot of people. But for today, we're going to take a look at seven, I think, seven top teams for this cup, as well as we can take a look at the meta. Um, in general, this meta is pretty much similar to what we had before. Some new Pokemon are in the meta compared to last season. For example, Ursa Luna is now within there, which we didn't have last season, I think, available. We have Florges there as well, still on the top spot. Most interesting Pokemon, which you're going to face basically on nearly every team, is going to be the Snorlax and also the Gyarados. You don't really need the Shadow version of either of them Pokemon. Shadow Snorlax is definitely the cooler one to use. I think for Gyarados, the normal version is actually better also than the Shadow, compared, like also Shadow's TMP Pokemon. But this doesn't say always anything, but for Snorlax, extra leg damage is pretty beneficial for you. But those Pokemon are the main say stops of this meta, Gyarados and Snorlax, so you're going to face them a ton of times. You can basically prepare it with like some Pokemon in the back that can deal with them, but um, we're going to take a look at this later. Some other stuff that could change was Mamoswine is now a little bit more viable, having access to Earth Power, we're going to be able to get, use Chestnut, which is going to be also an interesting one um, later on as well. As soon as we're gonna get Frenzy Plant, which is still going to take a little bit. Um, Frenzy Plant is going to be available on the Community Day, of course, on Saturday. Before that, it's not available, so um, you cannot really play it there. So only on Saturday, it's going to be viable. But I'm going to make a video as soon as I have access to this Pokemon as well. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this already. Um, Metagross is going to be super strong. Dragonite is still going to be super strong. Otherwise, like it goes pretty fast downwards here. Um, there are not a lot that Pokemon that really can still withstand the meta. Um, Machamp is still going to be good, Concala is going to be good, Swampert is going to be good, Excadrill is definitely one of the best Pokemon that you can use, Primarina as well. Um, Swampert also has some play now in the meta as well, I would think, but let's go straight into the teams. The first team here is going to be one of the most simplest teams, which you're also definitely going to face a lot of times. So we're going to have the Metagross in the lead here, we're going to have the say swap of the, um, Gyarados, yeah, Gyarados, again, one of the best say swaps in this meta. And we're going to have another Pokemon that doesn't really want to face any fairy types in the back with the Dragonite. Dragonite having access to Super Power going to be also way better now. But um, main goal for this team, of course, is going to be trying to bait out a potential fairy type with your Gyarados. And what I actually would recommend you as well is um, try to have Hydro Pump on your Gyarados. Try to use Hydro Pump and the Aqua Tail, at least that's what I find pretty effective. Um, because this would allow you to like sometimes win matchups against fairy types if they don't shield the Hydro Pump. I played this team before, last time this was available and had a lot of fun with that, so definitely a cool team to use. The next team going to be a one around Florges, which of course is ranked rank 1 on the Pew Poke rating, which definitely also kind of deserves that. The only issue with Florges is when you face up against a Steel type Pokemon, so we're going to have the say swap of our Snorlax, which is really decent against Metagross for example, because of Lick, but also has access to the move Superpower, which will punish something like Extra Draw, which you can use as a Pokemon in back here. Actually, even better as a Pokemon in the back would be Swampert if you have that, because you're going to be able to have even a better matchup against other extra drills. If you don't have Swampert in the back, extra drill as an opponent might be a little bit tricky because your lead loses to it, Snorlax is pretty neutral to it, and then you only have another neutral Pokemon in the back. While with a Swampert, you have a good answer for Metagross as well as for the extra drill in the back with that. So, might be a little bit of a better play to Yun the um, Swampert, but still. Definitely a very good team. You're going to face a lot more teams here as well with Snorlax as a say swap. It's just very, very strong in this meta. For the next team here, we're going to try to have a team with Ursa Luna, which got released like recently at least, um, which wasn't available last time. I think this this cup was around. Um, if you haven't built one yet for the Open Master League, that's definitely maybe something that you want to take a look at. Ursa Luna itself has a lot of potential, especially when it gets a better fast move someday, which most likely going to happen eventually. But... Right now it's still okay-ish in this meta, if not good, um, running Thunder Punch here as well, which is kind of interesting. We need something that's kind of similar to the team before, you can also use instead of the Swamp at the back, but would leave you a little bit open against some stuff, but here we're going to have Togekiss in the lead, you can also use Florges, Primarina, all the other good charm users, or like in general fairy types in the lead. Then you're going to have the say up again of Snorlax, being able to bait all potential fighting type users, very decent for a Pokemon that's weak to fighting types in the back, and also the core between the Togekiss and the Ursa Luna is pretty interesting. 
because um, you are really weak to Magnezone already there with the Toe Kiss, but Magnezone kind of gets hardwalled by the Ursa Luna, which is not the case with other normal types, so might be an interesting one there. Being a pretty decent core there as the lead, of course, is super weak to Magnezone. So yeah, this is a very interesting team. Ursa Luna is going to be an interesting Pokemon for sure. And we go to the next team. The fourth team here going to be with Gyarados in the lead. Um, this Pokemon itself, again, can be a good say so, but can also be a very good lead. Um, you're also going to most likely encounter a lot of times the Snorlax in the lead as well. Both of them are very just neutral in the lead. So like you're going to have a lot of neutrals where you can play it out and then maybe get either a Switch Advantage or a Shield Advantage. So this is always kind of nice. We're going to have as a say swap here the Memo Swine, and in the back we're going to have the Metagross. Basically, main idea here, you're going to have a lead with Dragon Breath, by the way, in my opinion, it's the best one there. You can try to figure out other stuff, but Dragon Breath is kind of needed, because also against other Gyarados, it's your best answer against it. But um, you would lose against Fairy Types, for that you have the Seisop of the Memo Swine, which is neutral against Forges, and super effective against something like the um, Togekiss. And then we're going to have the Metagross in the back that hopefully can sweep endgame. Pretty simple team, not gonna lie, but um, I kind of wanted to play something with the Mamoswine here, and Mamoswine looks like a very good pick, and we can take a look at another Mamoswine team now. Next team going to be with two flyers in the lead here. Again, the Mamoswine is a safe swap, and this time around, the Hisuian Everlock in the back. You can also use other ice types, for example, in the back. But main idea here is you're going to try to have something in the lead that can deal with especially the uh, Metagross, but also like in general fighting types, so you're kind of forced to use a flyer in the lead here. You're going to have the safe swap of the Mamoswine, which is going to hopefully get out the Metagross, which now hopefully can beat or like in general get a shield advantage against because of the high horsepower, which does way more damage than Bulldoze and threatens way more the Metagross than before. And then you're going to have in the back the um, Everlock, which really needs to have some setup to be good, but if it has some setup, it might be very, very strong just because Rockstar can deal with a lot of Pokemon in this meta. Very good bulk, very neutral Pokemon in general, Powder Snow, very strong fast move. Usually running with Crunch here and the Rock side, I think Blizzard would be also still fine. But Crunch gives you more, like an option at least against potential Metagross if they are a little bit lower already, so you can finish them off with that. But otherwise, very decent team here. I think Gyarados might be a little bit better than Dragon Knight, just because against um, the Metagross it's a little bit better. But... Um, it really depends. Dragon Knight can also work definitely well here. The next team here going to be actually the rank 1 team for last season. Like someone hit rank 1 in the world on the leaderboards with this team last season where this uh, meta was available. Very interesting team here. Definitely one of the stronger ones. You're going to have the super power version of Dragon Knight in the lead. You're going to have the safe swap of the Snow Legs. And you're going to have the Magnezone in the back. Magnezone will be a very cool Pokemon in this meta. I expect to see a lot of fairy types floating around. A lot of flying types floating around actually floating around and um, it's just neutral against a lot of Pokemon like if you think about it you see a lot of Gyarados around you see a lot of Snorlax around it's very neutral against those of course Snorlax has access to super power here as well but still a wild charge going to chunk that thing down um, and you're just having a very good typing and a very good coverage so Magnezone is still going to be one of the prime examples for a good Pokemon for this cup and together with the lead of Dragon Knight it's pretty, it's pretty harmonizing there but the only issue for this team there might be the extra drill, extra drill can be a little bit tricky you have to stay in there if you face in the lead um, but yeah, this still should be okay. Excadrill is just the biggest issue. Swampit as well, I guess, but you can bait that out pretty easily with the um, Snorlax. The final team you're going to be an OG team with Hexdross in the lead. Um, Hexdross is a very interesting Pokemon. A dragon that will be able to counter other dragons as well as steel types as well as normal types because of the move um, counter as a fast move. That's definitely what you want to run with it. Having access to Night Search is really good against the um, Metagross as well as you can beat something like, like the Excadrill as well with it. You usually need shield sword so you're going to have a bulky pokemon in the back with the snorlax again snorlax hay swap if you don't have a snorlax hay swap yet something that you really want to have for this cup especially if you would have even the best buddy version and then we're going to have the x schedule in the back so this is it for the cup from my side at least let me know in the comment section what um are you running are you going to play this cup are you going to play the open master league let me know in the comment section i hope you enjoyed this video if you found this helpful please share it with your friends and leave a like on the video for it's always free and helps me out a lot so i hope i see you in the next one have a great rest of your day bye